Hello everyone, I'm going to go ahead and create a tutorial here on using the command line or MS-DOS command line. Um, I'm going to actually use a couple of variables to allow us to actually type in, um, changing the IP address, maybe opening up a program, and then just creating a menu so that you can display it. Okay, so hang on just a second, let me get my Camtasia Studio up and running here. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. Let me put the screen back in view here. We should be good. All right, and let's start off. Had a couple of settings that I have from the previous ones that I've programmed. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this off and let's make a menu here. Let's go to, first let's go to run and then type in notepad. Let's bring up our notepad so we can see it clearly and let's make our menu system we'll have three options on this particular one first I'm going to start off with echo off second line it will be the start of my program start and then I want to clear the screen which is CLS and then let's start my menu here so I'm going to type in echo and we can let's start off with say maybe the pound sign here to start my menu off all right, go to the next line, type in echo. Whoops, put another one in here too, pound. Let's see, open notepad. Now, of course you could use a shortcut to do this. Media player, but it wouldn't be as cool as open it up with a program. So I'm just kind of showing you some neat things. I'm going to say the last one's going to be to change my IP address. And that one I'm sure that most of us haven't seen before using a net a net sh command. So that ought to be real helpful to you. You don't actually have to open up the graphical the GUI interface to do it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then lastly, we need to exit. And let's put the very bottom of our menu here. Okay, this is what's going to show up all the time to tell the user, hey, this is what I'm doing here. You know, this is going to put the screen up there every single time. Let me go ahead and take out this one little space I have right here. Go up. So what's going to happen is it's going to. This is the start of my program. Clear the screen and then put this in its place. So every time this is going to display to the end user. Well, your job is going to be is we're going to find. I'm going to show you how to get these things to open by command line. But mainly I'm going to make a couple of decisions. So I'm going to be using programming to do this. And it'll use an if statement and go tos inside of this program and we can even use a pause when needed okay so let's go ahead and get started with it so my first command is I need to see what the user is going to input so I'm going to type in set forward slash p and I'm going to name this my variable I'm going to call this variable data1 and I'm going to say equal I'm going to say select 1 2 3 or Four. Now I'm going to give it a space so that the the command line, when this shows up, whoops, I made a space on both sides. I'm going to only do it on one. So I'm going to make a space at this end so that when the prompt comes up and it asks you to select one of these three, it's not going to have it where it's jammed into right at the very end of four where the result's going to be. So that sets up a variable. My variable now is going to be data. So let's say if quote percent data one percent quote again and then equal equals quote and so my first line is going to be is it a one now I'm going to say go to program one okay then it's going to go to the next line if I haven't selected one it's just going to continue on through the program so I'm going to do 
percent again. I'll type in data one percent quote equal equal quote two. So you guys are kind of seeing the pattern on this, right? So I don't actually need to go through and type everything all over again. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this, copy it two more times. One, two, and then I'll change this to three. And this one to four. Four as well, and then three here. So you know that I'm going to make the, may, name these programs as this. You know, periodically, I would suggest to you guys to save this because you never know what happens on a Microsoft product. Sometimes it may just glitch out. You could have other issues. You could have a virus. I'm going to call this one Menu Text for now, but I do need to change it over. Actually, you know what? I'll just go ahead and call it Menu.bat. Make sure that you guys change this right here. This text document, make sure you change it to All Files. Whoops. So it goes to All Files, and it will save it as a batch file. So I'm going to click Save on that just to have it going. You can see it popped up on my desktop here. So let's go ahead and create our subtitles. But remember, before we can continue on the program, if all of these selections are not made, then we got to tell the computer to go right back up to the start menu again since it, it otherwise it's only going to go through this once. So I need to tell it to keep going. So I'm going to say go to start. So this is just in case nobody selects one, two, or three. Send it back up there and keep waiting until somebody gives it an input. Okay? That's what that's saying. So my next line will be quote or colon pro one. That's part of my program there. Whoops. Pro 1, next one will be Pro 2, Pro 3, and by the way, the spacing in this doesn't matter. This is just, they're not exactly evenly spaced, as you noticed, but it's just to fill in my program, what I'm going to run to be able to make that. So I want Notepad to open. So to try this out, let's go down to Start, and let's go to Run, and type in CMD. So if I'm at whatever screen I'm at, can I type in note pad and it'll start it looks like it does so that for the first test it looks like I don't have to put any special characters in it it'll start anywhere notepad if you type it in so as all I have to do to make that work then is I can come down here to the bottom I can say call notepad whoops notepad okay and then what I want to do once that's done since the program's finished I need to tell it where to go after it's finished that command I want to go to start so it sends it all the way back up to the top of here after it executes that command so let's go down to pro 2 pro 2 is media player so let's do let's check out that again let's go to the DOS prompt and type in I think it's mw player dot exe notice that it doesn't work so I can't it doesn't run from that let's go ahead and go to start and let's find Windows Media Player and I'm gonna right click on the shortcut here and go to properties let's see it's MW MW player but it's not apparently it's not in the path because I typed that in and it wouldn't open it over here since this wouldn't open what I need to do is I need to tell it the computer where the path is so I'm gonna copy the path right here which is right here in this shortcut go to copy and go back to my text document here what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us this little trick. I'm going to actually, what's called the path. If I type in path, if you notice that that particular place where it's under program files, program files is not included in this path of the of the system. So that's the reason why it wouldn't respond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little trick where I'm going to do it. I'm going to type in path equals. I'm going to paste what I copied there. That's my path. Okay, so that's a temporary path for this DAWS program. Once I close out the DAWS program, it won't ever equal that path again. I don't have to worry about it interfering with the system. So I'm going to hit enter on this and then call, which was it was WM player, if I'm not mistaken, dot exe. So let's enter that down there and type in go to and let's go to start. So now that we've gotten kind of far into our program here, I'm going to save it. I'm going to go ahead and execute it here and see if everything is functioning. So let's go ahead and double click on menu. And I have my menu which popped up here, which is wonderful. So let's give it a shot. Let's try to do number one and then hit enter. And look at that, it opened up notepad, no problem. Let's do number two. 
Hit enter. And it looks like number two is giving me some issues here. It looks like I'm not getting it to work. So I need to figure out what's going on with it. So let's see. Two, go to Pro 2, which it is. And then I need to... Oh, pff, no wonder. Look at this. I didn't do call. I just called it class. So it's call. I'm going to make that correction here. Save. Close it back out again. Fire it back up. And number one opens up notepad no problem and number two and there it is looks like my media player opened up no problem finish it okay let's try one more time let's do number two opened it up no problem there okay all right looks like we're going good so far let's save all my changes again just to make sure let's go to my pro 3 and Pro 3 is going to be to change your IP address. So this one's going to be quite a lengthy one here. So we need to add a couple of things for this one. In other words, we also need to bring in a couple of more variables in here and ask the system for some stuff. And the reason being for that is because we need to ask it what the IP address is and what the subnet mass is going to be. Let me take a look at my old document here. And yeah, it's going to be what the static IP address is, the mask, and we can also enter in what the gateway is going to be if we wanted to as well. We could do that. So let's add three of those parameters in there. Okay. All right. So number one, let's clear the screen so that it's only going to ask for our menu. It's going to get rid of our menu up there at the top when this runs this particular program. And let's type in set forward slash P and let's call this one IP equals let's tell them to enter in your IP address and put a little space there and then we want to also ask it to enter in mask which is subnet mask And then I want to enter in, let's see, I had something mess, and there was a gateway entry in that program I had here. Well, it said gateway. Yeah, it was right here. Here's what the gateway would have entered in there. So I'm going to tell it right there to enter that one in as well. So let's go back. Just call it gate. Okay, now you can see that I'm going to ask the computer for three sets of inputs. And my variables are IP, mask, and gate. So now I need to tell, ask it what to do. So since now I have all of those set, now I need to put that information into, into this one line or my data line and set it up. So to do that, let's take and copy. I uh, set this up with netsh. I'm going to use my camp command here. Let's copy it copy this in here so you guys can see this put the line of code this is going to definitely wrap so there's quite a bit of information here so just so you guys can see it here it's not wrapping too bad but it says net sh interface IP set IP address well that looks like I shouldn't use that variable in there so I'm going to call that IP1 just to make sure that it doesn't interfere with this command go through so it says ad set address name local area connection which is what the computer is defaulted to source is static and it says my address so that's my first address I'm gonna substitute that address line with my variable so my variable is gonna be percent IP 1 percent that says that's the variable that I'm entering the data in right here so my second part is gonna be that mask or my mask which is right here so I'm gonna tell it what I want so I'm gonna highlight this one right here and replace that with percent and I put my variable was called mask and then percent and then if we'll take a look back here in the beginning see right here where my mask was and I'm gonna call gate 
what I want my gateway address to be. So I'm going to put that right here as well. So I'll call that gate percent. So if you guys take a close look at it, you see how I modified it here. So I entered in, this is called NetSH interface, space IP, set, space address, space name equals local area connection, which it is here on the computer. That's the default connection. You can substitute your name in here for whatever one you have. Source is static, and it says my address, and I put my variable, which is right here. That's my IP1, and then my next one is my mask. I'll put in the mask that you're entering here and then what my gateway is. That's right over here. So it gives you kind of an idea of what it's like to be able to set that up and what I can do now since everything is set up and once it's all done I'm going to say let's type in echo finished and we'll pause it so I can hit any key to, to continue on in the program and then what we'll do is we'll send it back to start. Lastly, for the last part of the program here, what I want to do is since I'm calling out number four is my exit, so all I need to do is type in exit from my program line. Let's go ahead and save everything we entered here and let's close out of it close my other one here and let's run the menu program again and again let's slip in one opens up notepad no problem two opens up media player no problem and let's go ahead and do three and it changes it's asking me what my IP address is I'm gonna say 192.168.100.1 and what I want the mass to be 255.255.255.0 and then I'm going to ask for my gateway IP address to be 192.168.101.1 and hit enter Oop, looks like I got a typo and not recognized command let's see let's find out I went through it says not recognized net sh maybe that is a newer windows uh, 7 command let me take a look here to make sure let's go back to the command line type in net sh nope looks like i got a typo in there somewhere because it looks like it activated no problem what is it saying net sh what did i make a mistake on let's take a look Well, the only thing I see here is that it's a capital. Net SH. Let's see if it'll accept that. Let's go back through it one more time. Change it from a capital to a lowercase. Number three again. 10.10.10.1. And then 255.0.0.0. I'll make that 10. Dot, 10. Dot, 101.1 Looks like it just didn't like the capital. That's all it was. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. It was capitalized, so it didn't like the word. So look at that. It says OK, and it finished. And it added me to go through, hit any key to continue, and that brings me back to my window. Let's take a look at our IP address and see if it changed. Let's go to Control Panel and Network Connections. Right click on Local Area Connections and go to Properties. Go to TCP IP properties and look at that. It entered exactly as what we entered in. 101. And then you can even add an entry in here to add it DAWs as well. But that's a nice little way of editing things for a at a command line level. So thank you for joining me for the tutorial in command line programming. And I hope to see you guys create many more programs with this. Thank you again. Bye bye now.